Africans are generally spread all over the U.S., uh, all the way from Hawaii to Alaska to whichever place you can imagine. I've met Africans in places that I would have even never thought to meet people from uh, our home. But generally speaking, no matter where uh, folks live, the first place a person lands straight from uh, Kenya or from Africa, the place where you go through immigration for the first time and you get your quote-unquote America one-on-one is always very special. And for me, that place is DFW, which is Dallas-Fort Worth uh, in in, uh, Texas. That's where I landed straight from Kenya. And uh, I had my own variation of culture shock coming into Kenya. But in this video, I will talk about the culture shock that happens to Kenyans that are moving from one state to California. And believe me, there's culture shock that happens even for folks who have already settled. So forget about the culture shock that happens when you're new. I'm talking about the new culture shocks we experience as we move from one place to another within the U.S. But before we unpack all of that, welcome to the village, folks. As you can see, we are still in Karateng, our lovely, lovely village in Kisumu, uh, a very nice place in Western Kenya. Now, this morning, I want you to join me in just soaking up uh, the natural wonder of the village. Just looking at the flora and the fauna, just taking in the sounds, the smells, uh, and everything that comes with the village in the morning. Now, this is something that I, I, I enjoy and could be available to you if you choose to join us in the village. Now, most people already know that the U.S. is really huge. Uh, 50 states with multiple territories. It's, it's a very large uh, country, of course. Uh, so while some things generally uh, remain the same regardless of where you live, especially like interstates and uh, eateries, there's some things that it doesn't matter whether you're in Hawaii, Texas, Wyoming, you'll see the same things. But there are many other things that really vary as you move from one state to another. And I say this as a person who has lived in four states and traveled to about 40 states. I've seen quite a bit of uh, culture shock just moving from one state to another. But the biggest culture shock I experienced uh, was when I moved from Richmond, Virginia to uh, uh, Long Beach, California. So I'm going to list about uh, 10 or so culture shocks that many of us experience when we move from someplace else right into the great state of California. So the first thing was, for the first time, I realized there are places in the U.S. where you walk in and nobody speaks English. I remember in my first uh, week, uh, over the weekend, I went to look for tilapia, which is a big deal for me as a person who comes from uh, the lakeside. And so I walk into a store and nobody nobody spoke English, And I had to describe tilapia using gestures and sign language. Oh boy, that was quite an experience. After 20 minutes, I simply walked out because uh, I I just failed. And so there there are many places in California where nobody speaks English. And I think this is a phenomenon that that may be common in bigger cities like New York as well. But yeah, coming from a small, relatively small town, this was new to me. There are places where you go in and uh, you hear all kinds of languages. There's all kinds of translation. And of course, Swahili is not part of all of that. Uh, This uh, actually points to the second uh, culture shock, which is the dominance of Spanish. Especially if you're moving from a small town with very few immigrants into California, you're just shocked how much Spanish language dominates everything. I remember within the first couple of weeks, people would just call my phone and start speaking to me straight in Spanish. Or they would call and leave a voicemail completely in Spanish without ever knowing me. In many cases, my name is often misspelled. My last name is Achola. They often change that to Achola, which is a very common uh, Spanish name. And on YouTube, because I, sometimes I watch non-English stuff, a lot of the commercials I get come in Spanish. And so I've had cases where actually I talk to a person over the phone and then they ask me, oh, do, do you want to talk in Spanish? And then I have to remind them, uh, you know, I speak other languages like uh, Oswahili, uh, a little bit of Kiswahili, but my Spanish is still not quite there yet. Because they assume that if you don't speak English, then likely you speak uh, Spanish. So the dominant Spanish is really huge. It's something that could be really new for a person who comes from a different place. I mean, I love it. And now I've gotten used to it. It's actually part of my norm. And then the next uh, culture shock, too, is that 
uh, I moved from a cold place. I used to live in Pennsylvania, then I lived in Richmond, Virginia. Both uh, places get cold in the winter. And then when I came to look for my, uh, to interview for my job, it was actually in the winter of about 2013 or so. I landed in Long Beach Airport, and this is middle of February. And then uh, I'm already dressed in my boots and winter gear and a cap on and gloves. I come out of Long Beach Airport and I see people in sandals and shorts and I see green grass. I just stood there watching and I was like just completely wowed that it's 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 winter and people could be outside and it's green and there's like lots of tropical plants. I would see like eucalyptus and then you see plants like Vinyalubiro. I don't know what Vinyalubiro is in English. Somebody would help me with that. And then I would also see things like Ojuok, which is also another uh, tropical plant that I, I don't know what the English translation is, but just seeing lots of plants that I see back home, everywhere in California, and I was just I was just completely sold, and I I knew this was it, and so especially if you live in Southern California, we technically don't have like a proper winter or even changes in seasons, so that can be really shocking if you come from a cold place, especially in, uh, in Northeast, and then of course driving, and everybody has something to say about drivers from some other state, but I remember. As soon as I crossed into California and we drove all the way from Virginia to California, took four days, it, it just felt like California people drive very close to each other and drive really fast. And that was really scary because I kept uh, trying to exit so I can leave more space. But as soon as I create space, somebody would be just sneaking right in front of me. So that took some getting used to. And then, of course, the more obvious comment is about the cost of living in California. Uh, a lot of people who talk about how California is expensive don't even live in California. And some of them have not even lived in California. But it's true that uh, maybe two things, that our gas and our mortgage can be really expensive. My rent actually tripled uh, when I moved to California. And uh, I think some of it is sort of uh, mitigated by uh, the uh, earnings in California because people make a little bit more in California than they do in other places. For example, fast food uh, workers, uh, a minimum wage of about, I think it's like $20, when in some states I think they pay $7. So there's that too. And then you'll see lots of expensive cars everywhere, especially if you live in Southern California. Uh, in Pennsylvania, I lived in a very small town called Indiana. You'd barely, at the time, you'd barely see any expensive or luxury cars. But in Long Beach, LA area, you see lots of luxury cars everywhere. And then, of course, the temperature change. Sometimes I leave Long Beach when it's about 75 degrees, to go visit a friend uh, uh, in the Inland Empire about an hour. When I get there, it's like 95 degrees, like 20 uh, degree difference within just a space of an hour. So in California, you can still get snow, the desert, and surf at the beach within the same day. So there's wild uh, differences in temperature. And then the sheer size of, of, the, of the state is, is mind-boggling, particularly for folks who move from small states like Delaware, Maryland, and things like that. California is really big. I think it's probably the third largest state uh, by uh, land mass. And if you drive from San Diego, which is at the bottom next to Mexico, all the way up to the border between Oregon and California, it is many, many hours of driving. So it's really big. And it's actually the most popular state in terms of population in the U.S. The other shocking thing for me moving from uh, East Coast to California is that I got to the apartment and then I realized that apartments don't come with refrigerators. On the East Coast, every apartment you walk into, for the most part, has at least a stove uh, and a refrigerator. Some of them actually come with washers and dryer and microwave and all that. But in California, that was not the norm. I'm sure there are exceptions, but I was just shocked that uh, as, a, as a renter, I needed to go rent a refrigerator. And so that was quite some adjustment in terms of just moving from one apartment to another. And then, of course, in California, you always have fresh fruits and vegetables are available all year round. When I lived in Pennsylvania, in a small town, especially in the middle of winter, they sell like withered uh, vegetables and you hardly get the fruits that we have in California. Especially oranges are always, always there. So I love that about California, that a lot of fruits and vegetables are always freshly available most times of the year, including uh, winter times. And then uh, one other interesting thing about uh, living in California, especially Southern California, is that there are lots of Africans everywhere. 
absolutely love it. If you want like African restaurant, African uh, parties, churches, there's lots of Africans everywhere. But surprisingly enough, that the dating pool somehow seems to be really tight, especially for girls. I don't know why that's the case, but despite the fact that we are many, uh, maybe it's because uh, Soko Nichafu, uh, somebody can help translate that. Uh, Soko is already small, and then I think it's Chafu too. So the dating scene seems very, very small. But yeah, there's lots of us out here. We actually even have a Kenyan consulate right here in Southern California, in Los Angeles. And so... Anybody who knows why that is the case could help explain that, but I don't know why. There's lots of us here, but the dating pool seems to be not as robust. So, and it's not for lack of opportunities for people to get together. Like I said, there's tons of places where Kenyans and Africans get together. But for whatever reason, uh, there's a lot of folks who are single, not by choice. There are people who would like to date and all that, but somehow the dating pool... It doesn't match what I was expecting when I moved to California. And then, of course, uh, in California, the one thing I really love about California is that I don't have to worry about what Republicans are going to do at the state level. Because California is highly, highly dominated by uh, Democrats. Because if you live in a, a Republican state or conservative states, uh, they usually cut education budgets. Uh, they make all kinds of rules that make it very difficult for even teachers to get licenses. There's one state where, I, as a foreign student, I could not even get a teaching license because of the rules the public can put in place. And then with immigration, even though states don't control immigration laws, they make things difficult, for example, around licenses. In California, even if you don't have papers, you can get a state license, something that would not be allowed in a place like Texas. And so California makes it really easy for Republic, I mean, for, for immigrants. And then lastly, we have unions in California that make life very easy. Well, I hope you can relate to this and I'll see you in the next.